Hello. Thank you for joining us today for Public Health in Action, where we discuss public health issues facing Stanley County. My name is Debbie Bennett, and I'm a health educator with the Stanley County Health Department. My guest today is Dennis Joyner. He is the health director with the Stanley County Health Department. Dennis, today we are going to discuss the recently completed community health assessment. From January through March of 2011, all Stanley County residents had the opportunity to complete a community health assessment survey. These surveys were either accessed online or hard copies were made available through the health department, partners in health agencies, community group meetings, or even in some churches. The survey data was combined with current statistics, it was analyzed, and then compiled into a report. My question for you today is, what is the purpose of the Community Health Assessment Report? Well, Debbie, it's, uh, I think it's one of the fundamental uh, frameworks that uh, public health is based on, is getting a community health assessment. Because it's so vital that we understand better what the community health issues in a community, uh, what those issues are, how they change, uh, and how we may have improved in certain areas or how they may have gotten worse, unfortunately. And it's very, very similar to when we as individuals get sick or even just need to go to the doctor for a routine checkup um, every so often. Um, it's important to know uh, what, the, what the illness may be or uh, to run necessary screening tests so that we know that we're doing okay. The same way uh, a doctor would treat a patient uh, from a public health standpoint, we see the community as our patient. And so we kind of do the same thing through this community health assessment. So it's very, very important and it's, uh, it's fundamental to being able to have an, uh, a healthy community. Thank you. There were 1,168 usable surveys completed. How do we know this community health assessment report is representative of the residents of Stanley County? Well, we're very fortunate to uh, be doing this community health assessment right on the heels of the completion of the uh, 2010 U.S. Census. So we have data to compare the respondents that, we, uh, that responded to the survey to the U.S. Census data. And, and in, it's, in a way, it's kind of uncanny how ironic and ironic that the, uh, uh, the demographics match the U.S. Census very, very well. Roughly, in terms of racial breakdown in particular, uh, it's very, very similar to um, the, the U.S. Census. Uh, there were more women that responded to the survey than men. Uh, we hear from other uh, researchers who do a lot of survey or questionnaire driven research uh, say that that's not too uncommon, that uh, women tend to respond to questionnaires more so than men. But, but all in all, in comparing our respondent demographics to the U.S. Census, it's, it's very, very similar, which we're very, very pleased with that. There are several sections to the Community Health Assessment Report. One of the first sections of it is how residents view their quality of life in Stanley County, and what were the findings for that particular section? Uh, it's very uh, <coughs> refreshing to know that, uh, for the most part, people love being in Stanley County. They like Stanley County. They think it's a good place to work. It's a good place to raise their family, uh, raise children. Uh, and uh, all in all, uh, there was a lot of enthusiasm you could kind of gather of, of living and being in Stanley County, a lot of pride that came out of the, uh, the questionnaire in that regard. Another section of the report, the residents identified and ranked community issues besides the unemployment and underemployment, which has been a problem the last few years. Were there other top overall community issues? Uh, Yes, in, uh, you mentioned obviously the, the unemployment and underemployment, which was a, was a big one. Uh, lack of health insurance was one of the issues that uh, was a concern. 
as well as child abuse and child neglect, that whether that's physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. Um, that was uh, a little bit surprising to us, not that there's uh, not, certainly not a need for it, but uh, it was picked up in, in the, uh, the survey as being a, a, a high, one of the higher concerns. Crime uh, was also listed fairly high as a concern in the community. Uh, as well as some other areas that, um, that I find interesting, things like lack of recycling, uh, which from a uh, broad community standpoint is something I think we all need to be aware of, and I know there have been efforts to increase recycling, but uh, when you look at the broad sense of where the community health issue or the community concerns uh, fail, um, it really was unemployment, underemployment, um, lack of health insurance or inadequate health insurance, child abuse and neglect, and um, crime were sort of the top ones. Was there a specific type of crime that they highlighted? Uh, primarily, well, it was listed as theft and robbery was the main ones that the, uh, was listed on the survey. Okay. Another section on the survey was identifying health concerns. Illegal drug use was the top health concern on the 2007 Community Health Assessment Report. What health concerns did the participants list as their top overall health concerns in the current Community Health Assessment Report? Well, Debbie, you're right. Substance abuse was, has historically been high um, in all the community health assessments that we've, that we've done. Um, however, it dropped somewhat this year in 2011. The overall um, health concern was viewed as tobacco and smoking. Um, that may surprise some folks to some extent, given that uh, there's been a lot of attention around tobacco. There have been new regulations placed on tobacco over the last year. Um, but it still, in a way, is somewhat refreshing to know that the general public, or at least in Stanley County, still see tobacco as a big concern. Uh, tobacco is still a contributor, uh, one of the leading contributors to the leading causes of death, uh, both here in Stanley County and um, uh, really across the nation in terms of its uh, uh, huge risk factor in, in terms of heart disease, cancer. Um, it's, it's one of those risk factors if we can address, we can have some big impacts. So in a way, it's nice to know that the public sees tobacco as a big concern in the community. Um, Another one of the big issues in the community uh, health assessment survey was um, the issue of obesity and overweight. Um, uh, we hear a lot of that. There's a national um, epidemic around the whole obesity um, dilemma that we're faced with. And uh, here again, it is a huge contributor to many of the causes of mortality in uh, um, in Stanley County and nationwide as well. So we've got two big ones there to try to address um, in terms of tobacco use and obesity. Uh, they're complex, but uh, if we can tackle those, it'll have a big impact in terms of the leading causes of mortality. Uh, illegal drug use then obviously is uh, still a concern. Um, it plays into so many different factors, substance abuse, uh, it can impact the leading causes of death, whether that be uh, heart disease. It also relates to many of the other conditions that we see often in public health as it relates to uh, teen pregnancy, alcoholism, and injuries in terms of accidents and motor vehicle accidents, um, those kinds of things. So clearly it's understandable that substance abuse would be a, a big concern in our community. Um, Cancer, overall cancer was, uh, uh, was, was high as well, but uh, the, the big three were tobacco, obesity, and uh, uh, substance abuse. You've alluded to this somewhat, but in this report, they also had the mortality data for Stanley mm -hmm. County. And what are the major causes of death for folks in Stanley County? Well, the leading, the leading causes of death um, in Stanley County are heart disease um, and cancer. Those are the two that sort of stand out above, above all of them. Um, 
uh, it's then followed by, um, uh, in terms of the top five, cerebrovascular disease as another one of the big ones. And um, uh, a lot of um, uh, emphysema-related or uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or respiratory-type diseases. But in terms of the uh, leading causes of death, one of the things that's a bit concerning for us is that while uh, heart disease and cancer uh, are, are commonly um, the leading contributors or leading causes of death, not just here but across North Carolina, uh, the, the unfortunate thing is you know, San Luis County over the last several years has remained significantly higher than the state average. So uh, clearly there's a lot of work that's got to be done to tackle those particular uh, causes of death. So from what you've said, there is a relationship between what people see as problems like with tobacco and obesity, overweight, and the major causes of death in this county, which is heart disease, cancer. There's that correlation. There's that relationship there. Very much so. And that actually, from a, um, a, a public health practice standpoint, was nice to see the survey sort of, in a way, validate, validate the data that we see in terms of um, mortality data. Um, the risk factors that are associated with heart disease, as you just mentioned, obesity um, and uh, uh, tobacco use as well as cancer uh, relate very, very well. Um, obesity, obviously the, the risk issues there is nutrition, diet, and, uh, and physical activity. Um, uh, one of the interesting things that I want to drive home to, to everyone is that for many of the causes of death, the risk factors can be addressed with action that we control ourselves. It's a matter of of getting active, uh, eating properly, um, and uh, those are things that we all, um, I think, as a community need to strive to do more of. And uh, there are efforts that have gone on here in Stanley County that, uh, that are good things for us to build on. Uh, we've got a lot of parks. We've got a lot of efforts going to try to increase physical activity uh, and address the issue of obesity. We just need to continue to, to build on those efforts. Also in this report was a profile on personal health care. And this section involved finding out how people access their health information, health care, and health screens, as well as their personal health habits. Where did people say they got most of their health information? Uh, well, you would, you would gather, and it would be correct, that most folks still get their health information from uh, their doctor, for the most part. Uh, However, a close second was the internet. So I guess this is um, con it's sort of convincing evidence that you know, the internet and the web is certainly here in terms of sharing information. And uh, it's, um, I'm no different than many of the other people. I mean, I think we all uh, turn to the internet for a lot of our research and finding information. Um, I would just caution folks to, be sure that those areas that they're, they're getting their information on the internet is, is accurate and reliable information. But uh, I thought that was interesting, but it comes in a very close second to their doctor. Also in this section, they talked about their personal health habits, and you've alluded to some of that, that we have some impact on our own health outcomes. So would you please elaborate on some of the findings on people's personal health habits that they responded to in this survey? Yes. Um, uh, a lot of folks, uh, a free force indicated that they felt that they had good dietary habits. Um, uh, those that were 75 and older had the highest percentage of um, uh, stating that they had healthy dietary habits. So I guess in some cases, maybe as we get older, we get wiser and perhaps make better choices. I don't know about that. Um, the middle-aged crowd, 20 to 54 years of age, are the ones who tended to say they had poor uh, dietary or unhealthy dietary habits. Um, 
about 60% of the respondents said that they had participated in physical activity within the past week. Um, and which that's, you know, I think that's a pretty reassuring uh, in some ways. Uh, whether or not that physical activity was truly strenuous, uh, but our big thing was trying to see if people did define some action as, as physical activity to get up and moving. Um, over 80% indicated they had not used any form of tobacco in the past seven days, which that was, uh, that sounds like a big statistic. However, that implies that 20% had used tobacco in some shape or form in the last seven days. Uh, roughly three-fourths also indicated that they had not uh, uh, consumed alcohol during the past seven days as well. And 100%, uh, or at least uh, from the survey standpoint, stated they hadn't used illegal drugs. Uh, that might have been a difficult question for some folks to ask if they actually had, uh, had used or, uh, but by and large, the respondents in the, in the uh, survey seem to think that they, by and large, uh, were, were, were using good health habits. Uh, so um, we, we, need to, we need to try to build on that. The final section of this report was barriers to health and human services. And this included health insurance coverage, transportation, as well as knowledge about health care and mental health care services. What was noticeable, or excuse me, what was notable about these barriers? Well, I think one of the big ones that we're clearly facing uh, in our community, and the survey uh, demonstrated well, was the, uh, the the issue of health insurance and not having uh, adequate health insurance in the community. Um, and that's sort of um, confounded by the fact that our economy has not been very good. We've had job um, retraction in many ways in our community. And most people get their insurance through their employer still. And so when you don't have uh, employers that are moving into the community, you don't have the, the chance for insurance. Uh, so those two things together kind of present a double whammy for many of us in the community. So I think the the whole partnership with economic development uh, and, and, and job and business growth is very important and, and hopefully the economy's uh, turnaround will come soon so that uh, that will hopefully add some relief in the community. The state requires every county to submit a community health assessment report every four years. What are some of the ways that this report or this information in this report can be used in Stanley County? Well, we hope it's going to be used by numerous agencies and organizations to uh, look at the data, see what the issues are, and perhaps uh, maybe it can help validate some of the issues that they want to address as a community agency or organization. Uh, we hope that the data can be somewhat of a, rattle, uh, a rallying cry, so to speak, in the community. Uh, to address some of the concerns that have been um, identified. Uh, many organizations use the data to help them get grants so that they can then further develop programs and initiatives to uh, address some of the health concerns. Uh, we clearly will do that with the health department. Uh, uh, the Partners in Health Coalition has um, uh, looked at this information and they uh, have priorities that they want to continue to try to address and we hope that others in the community will do the same thing. Um, as you know, uh, going after grants requires adequate data. They want to know what the community's health is and if you can quantify that and characterize it through an assessment, uh, it, it it hopefully will uh, make that grant proposal a little more competitive. Thank you very much, Dennis. The entire Community Health Assessment Report is available online at www.co.stanley.nc.us. I appreciate you joining us today for this discussion on the current Community Health Assessment Report. Remember, public health works for you. Thank you.